let's get closer to the people. Yeah, yeah. I want to stand all the way back there, far away from there. I want to be close to you. I love you. Hi. Hi. Uh, welcome to the eighth Joko Cruise. <laughs> Uh, I can't tell you how crazy a sentence that is. I did not ever uh, imagine in my life that I would have even one fan cruise. And the fact that I when you were a child in Connecticut, even then, saying, even when I was a privileged middle class white male cisgender child in Connecticut, <laughs> growing up on a ship, growing up on a cruise ship, I did not imagine that I would have my own cruise ship, but here we are. Uh, I have a question. How many of you are actual first-time sea monkeys. Yeah. Wow! How many of you are here because you're weird completists, even though you've been here? Okay. There's some overlap, which is fine. There's some overlap. <laughs> they, I phrased it in a confusing way, I understand. Uh, well, welcome. I'm, I'm so thrilled uh, to have all of you here. Uh, it's, uh, I was just complaining to the performers that I had a, I had a, a sort of stress attack this last week as I realized Oh shit, I gotta do shows on board a cruise ship next week. By the way, hi kids. Yeah, oh sorry. <laughs> sorry for the language. Uh, and uh, and really just just being here and, and being underway, even though we haven't left port yet, but just being with all of you here, I'm reminded uh, how warm and fuzzy and happy it makes me feel uh, to be with all of you nice people. So uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's not only a running joke, it is true. I don't really know what's going on <laughs> as far as the cruise and how it's organized and when things are happening. So I'm, I'm doing my best to be a genial figurehead. Uh, and then what I do is I hand it over to the people who really know what's going on. Uh, in this case, Paul and Storm. Good afternoon, students. Good afternoon, Principal Savoy. Wow. So you've got the training. That's good. They grow up so fast. I uh, somehow evolved into the role of Principal Saborin, and I have embraced it. <laughs> it's my lot in life. And over there is Storm, a.k.a. Coach Cruz. Yeah, I was at Party City. It was the best I could do on 24 hours notice. All the way to New Orleans and did something untoward with his breasts to get that. <laughs> Track That's me how much down. he cares for you. Track me down later. Maybe you'll get the story. Uh, anyway, we are two of the remaining uh, organizers of Joko Cruise, and we welcome you, first-timers. Thank you for joining us. Give yourselves a gratuitous round of applause. We are here to inadequately answer some of the questions that you have. Uh, I was just going to ask, uh, how many of you received and read the, the Sea Monkey Primer that we did? Cool, it, it kind of worked. We skipped it. So we have a, a, a brief presentation about the wonderful fine products at Amway for you. Start things off. And then we'll get into the cruise proper, but we'll just sort of walk you through the bullet points of the cruise, so to speak, which answers most people's basic questions. And then at that point, anything and everything you have, uh, we are happy to attempt to answer. So we're going to scoot to the side so that our shadows aren't covering And I'm going to leave entirely because slideshows are really boring. <laughs> no offense. I have, to go, I have to go and make sure all the entertainment on the ship is fantastic. I'm going to go do that in the next 45 minutes. And I'll see you back on this stage later. In my head, I hear the, the Mr. Rogers trolley song every time. <laughs> John. So, Joko Cruise 2018. Webster's Dictionary defines cruise. Hot <laughs> Twain once said. <laughs> but to be a steamboatman is, is to divine. That's part of our uh, two man, one man Mark Twain show. Appearing off, off, off Broadway in 2020, and night five, we'll be doing that spontaneously. Yes. Uh, so, first things first, he said, pointing at the wrong thing. Uh, here's how dinner and the shows work, because that's the only marginally confusing part of the schedule, is you have been 
divided into two equal and non-competing, non-rival teams. <laughs> red team and gold team. Who's on red team? And where's my gold team at? Uh-oh. It's all right. Together you will destroy the Death Star. That's right. So because this theater only fits roughly half of the ship, on the nights where there are main shows, which is most nights, they'll be repeated twice. There'll be the early show and the late show. The red team will go to dinner first at 5 and then see the late show at 7.30. Gold team will go to the show at 5 and then go to dinner at 7.30. Please try not to trip over each other as you pass going from the front to the back of the ship. The, uh, the main dining room is on decks 2 and 3 uh, at the back end of the ship. We are at the front end of the ship in the main theater. Um, we already went over the wristbands. Make sure for those main shows that you have your wristband with you. It is how the people manning the doors will know that you belong at this particular show. Um, you are welcome to attend both shows if you so desire. However, for the show that is not your group, we'll ask that you wait until the show starts. Basically, everybody else, you know, the people who belong there get dibs on the seating. There should be plenty of room because we are not at full capacity, unfortunately. Um, but we're close. Uh, but there should be room for people if you want to see another show. Uh, that is, you know, you, the, the opposite show, I should say. You're welcome to do that once that show starts and everybody else has had a chance to sit. Um, so you, you can feel free to do that. That's the, these are the only times that the wristbands are required. All other events are... Uh, come one, come all, first come, first served. Um, any confusion or questions regarding how that work? Question? Um, for the people of, of us, Gold Team, mm -hmm. you see the show before the dinner, is there going to be a dinner after the show? Or is there going to be any food-related things in the show? <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, for the people seeing the early show, before they go to dinner, are there food things related in the show? Do you mean, are we going to talk about food and make you that much hungrier, or are we going to give you food to spoil your dinner? <laughs> We're going to talk about, I cannot, oh. I cannot say they're well, I was planning to start a pie fight during every show. <laughs> That's a given. There's the, di the day three pie fight is tradition. But they're not edible, so it doesn't really count. I so. don't think, uh, I don't think anybody's going to be doing a whole lot of talking about food. That said, uh, frankly, now that you've mentioned it, it's all I can think about. Yeah. <laughs> but, see, here's, here's where you're safe. The first rule of a cruise ship is it is nearly impossible not to eat at all times because food is everywhere and it is free. Yeah. Is there a particular food you would like us to talk about? <laughs> it's all good. Great. Great. Yeah. We will try not to make you that much hungrier during the show, but no promises. So we're going to do our Swedish chef for the entirety of our session. <laughs> so that's how the dinner and shows work. Uh, regarding the other shows and events, uh, there are various and sundry ways of seeing the schedule for this week. Uh, you can go to the online schedule, uh, certainly now while we're still in port, and if you pay for the internet, more on that later. Uh, that is the URL for it. You should all have received that multiple times. That will always be uh, the most updated version of the schedule, but it will be equally updated uh, on the printed schedule. Well, there's this that you should have all gotten when you checked in, a paper schedule of all the official events. It doesn't include the Shadow Cruise events, unfortunately, but those weren't locked in enough by the time we had to go to press on this. Um, but you can see all of the uh, main events on this printed schedule, although there have been some changes since we printed that because that's how these things work. Um, there will be posted schedules throughout the ship especially in all of the uh, elevator banks on every floor and on the main traffic floors, which are deck two and three and nine in the main elevator banks. There are full schedules with descriptions of all the events as well, much like they are in the online schedule. And those are updated daily. Yes, those are, those are reposted daily uh, as things get added. Uh, and, and then elsewhere throughout the ship, there are numerous T, uh, digital uh, schedules on the various TVs posted. Uh, there are other schedules besides in those elevator banks that uh, may just be the day-by-day -day schedule, but the, like the full week schedule is in those locations in the elevator banks. Uh, and the daily schedules 
Uh, oh, yeah, but also in the daily newsletter. Every, every evening uh, while you are at dinner, they will deliver the next day's newsletter, which will include the full schedule for that next day uh, of both regular and shadow cruise events. Uh, and that will be updated as well. And finally, on your television sets, they've installed all new TVs, except most of you are all new to this cruise, so it doesn't matter how new they are. <laughs> You'll appreciate that they're yeah. new, though. Yeah, you're, it's good that you waited, because last year's TVs sucked. Uh, but every, every stateroom has uh, a relatively... One, one of the channels is just last year's TV, so you can tell. <laughs> they, they have a whole new system on board, which includes a whole on-demand menu uh, you, there's various TV shows and, and movies, and amongst that menu, there's a whole Joko Info tab that includes the entire schedule day by day, uh, which again will be updated uh, as the week goes along. Because, and I say that because uh, events get added. It's part of the sort of the joy of Joko Cruise. Uh, we don't keep things entirely fixed. Performers may want to add a, a office hours session. Again, something we'll get to in a second. Or just, you know, if more shadow cruise events get scheduled, we want people to know uh, that they exist and how to get to them. So we try to keep things a little f flexible, uh, and we appreciate your, uh, not, uh, your not being upset that the printed schedule that we hand you isn't 100% accurate necessarily. And if at any time you're not certain, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about this in a bit, if you're not certain of where to find events, um, we have the helper monkeys that can help you out. Oh, one more place that the schedule is going to be that I did not put on, on this PowerPoint here, excuse me, keynote <laughs> PowerPoint, um, is uh, on the ship, uh, when, if you connect to the ship's network, not the internet, but if you just connect to the ship's network, their main page, the navigator page, will include entries for all of the schedule as well on that. Uh, it's kind of a handy thing. We're trying it out this year to see how it works. Um, but should be available there as well, and you won't have to pay for internet necessarily to see the schedule online there. Uh, the, every show that is in this room, both the main concerts and the various panels and podcasts and such that are in this room, will be simulcast on the ship's TV. I do not know offhand which channel. It's one of the drop-down tabs. Uh, also, those shows will all be recorded and you will be able to view them via that on-demand menu. So as the week goes along, you'll be able to see a history of all the different events that happen in this room. So for example, if you are a completist who wants to see both main shows, you don't necessarily have to attend them both, you can just watch the other one on the TV. Or maybe you heard that John Hodgman in the other show just talked about food the whole time, and you wanted to find out about yeah. that, you can look it up. Uh, we also, uh, it has not been an issue Last year was the first year we had an entire ship, and we were concerned about people getting into the various events, and that they, whether or not they were going to be all full up. We did not have an issue with that last year at all. Every event, everybody who wanted to get into was able to, even in the case that something fills up and you are not going to be able to get into this room, uh, you'll be able to see, see it uh, on demand there. So all is not lost. But again, we do not expect it to be an issue as far as attendance. Um, we do, that said, between each session, have a policy of clearing the room, so there's no camping in, all, all day to see the one thing. This is not Hall H. <laughs> uh, it is at the discretion of the volunteers manning the doors, depending on how crowded an event is and how long or short the line is uh, waiting for it. It's at their discretion if they decide they don't really need to clear the room because there's still plenty of good seats, but uh, unless you are told otherwise, expect to have to clear in between each event. Any other questions so far regarding how all that stuff works? Great. Onward and upward. Uh, Loretto. Uh, last year, we because things weren't difficult enough doing an entire cruise ship, we also decided to stop and do a land concert halfway through, and it went great, so we are doing it again this year. Our second port stop, which is on Wednesday in Loretto, Mexico, uh, we essentially take over the town square. I mean, they let us. It's not like we stormed the square. <laughs> and after last year, they'd be prepared. <laughs> yes. Uh, they, the town has generously offered us the use of their town, basically, and we set up a, a big stage in the middle of the town square, and there is a concert from 4 o'clock until about 11-ish. Oh, and in case it's not clear, that's for everyone at once, regardless of which team you're on. We're all together for that. Yes, show. you don't need your wristbands. It's open to everyone. It's open to the people of the town as well. It's just a real good, fun time. 
Uh, the town and the Loretta Restaurant Association are also throwing a food festival, which we've emailed you about several times at least. Uh, there are 14 different food tents, two of which are dedicated to vegetarian options. Uh, if, you are if you have not pre-bought tickets for that, you can do so on site, basically at the pier when you get there, there should be a tent and a table where you can buy, uh, it's $25, that gets you a wristband and seven tickets. Each ticket is redeemable for a food item at these different tents. Uh, a lot of people enjoyed it last year. It is not, it's not mandatory. There are plenty of other places to eat. There are restaurants all throughout the square and town that you're welcome to partake in. They all accept US cash. They accept credit cards. Um, but if you would like to try the Food Fest option, uh, that is available to you. If you did pre-order your vouchers for the Food Fest, if you ordered them online, uh, those should have been delivered to your staterooms. Golden ticket. Right, we have kind reports that they have to Do not lose that. Consider that to be cash uh, because that's basically what they're going to be serving as because you're going to hand those over to the uh, Loretto folks when you uh, get off board. We'll have more instructions regarding that. And there will be food on the ship as well. Like if you just don't want the food festival, you just rather eat on the ship, you can still do that. So don't worry that once we get to Loretto that it's, uh, you'll starve if you don't go to yes. the food fest. Don't worry about that. And um, the, for both Cabo and Loretto, those are called tender ports because uh, the, basically the channel isn't deep enough for the ship to pull all the way up to a dock. So we park out in the bay and they run actually several of the ship's uh, lifeboats essentially function as tenders where a couple hundred of you at a time will board and just take the roughly quarter mile or half mile ride yeah. to the pier. Think of yourself as an away team. You don't need to, they're, they're, depending on, if you're wanting to get on one of the early ones, there is a, a sort of wait list process for that. Uh, there's a, they will explain all of that, and I believe there will be a handout regarding the tendering process. But if you're not in a rush to get off immediately, it is generally just walk out. You don't need a ticket or a reservation. You just walk up and you wait and you get on the tender and you go. And then when you want to come back, they are running regularly throughout the day. Just wait at the pier. Tender will show up. You get on, you come back here. So you it's, can... Go back and forth as much as you want. Uh, you can, if you wanted to go into Loretto for a while, then come back here and eat dinner and then go back to see the, the concert or some of the concert. Absolutely. Uh, nothing is mandatory on Joko Cruise. Uh, there are some people who never ever get up from a gaming table except to sleep or pee or eat. Uh, and that is absolutely fine. There's people who never attend any of the shows. Please, do, please do get up from the table to yeah, do those things. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, I shouldn't encourage that thing. No, it, I, it, this is your cruise. I mean, we've got your money. Do what you want now. <laughs> but don't feel, uh, don't feel obligated to have to do anything necessarily. Um, it is very enjoyable to say, stand at the back of the ship and just watch the wake go for, say, an hour or two, not that I've ever done that. <laughs> but that said, um, oh yeah, we mentioned that's US cash only if you're going to be buying the food festival tickets on site. Uh, at 4 p.m., the land concert starts, that runs until about 11 or so. Uh, DJ Riz Rollins, who was with us last year, basically after, from about 9.32, from 9.30 until about when it ends, but no later than 11, 11.15. Uh, those of you who want to dance the night away may dance. No one at AM. Oh, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, no, I didn't. We're partying till dawn! Every day! Just start dancing wherever you are. Anytime. Yeah, it's the PM. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. It's Keynote's fault. Five points from Gryffindor. Uh, the ship departs at 1 a.m. The last tender leaves at 12.30 a.m. Uh, so make sure you are back at the pier by no later than 12.30 because you're grown-ups, most of you, and if you're not there, you're going to stay there. <laughs> the tenders are like lifts that you don't have to call until they're gone entirely. <laughs> uh... Yeah, we just talked about the tenders. Good. And also, probably there are chicken tenders in town somewhere. <laughs> yes, the tenders do not serve chicken tenders, nor are they made of chicken tenders. 
And they've heard that joke a million times. <laughs> Uh, what's next here? Oh, that's a map of, but when you get to the pier, basically you go to the end of the pier, you take a left, you take a very obvious right, there will be signage, it's a beautiful little tree-lined uh, walkway. Oh, the food festival is actually... Well, that's about... next. Don't worry, oh, okay. that's next. It is a, I just it is... wanted to point out this part of the screen, it's very yeah. lovely. So, from the point you get off to the Lanka, it's maybe a half-mile walk. There is also... Uh, a cart for people with any mobility issues. They'll be running a cart back and forth from the town square area and the pier throughout the day. Well, <laughs> I want to go on the cart. <laughs> oh man, now it's a cruise. Thank you. At 1.53, the audience became self-aware. <laughs> Judgment Day, they called it. This is why I drink. <laughs> if you are not taking a seat away from a person who needs the cart, and the cart is there, go nuts. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, it's roughly a half mile. It's a, it's a nice, pleasant walk. There will be signage and sea monkey, uh, helper monkeys pointing you at certain times in the direction. Speaking of helper monkeys, may I please introduce cruise mom, Tara. I know she is not very identifiable. <laughs> Tara is in charge of all of our volunteer staffing, and among those are our helper monkeys. That is the volunteer staff who are working various events. They will be wearing these pink vests when they are on duty, and they are happy to help if you have any questions about a thing that is going on. Also, if they ask you to do a thing, we ask that you do that thing. Uh, in addition to the helper monkeys, there are also, this year for the first time, uh, a set of sea monkey, R, of, uh, new, monkey new monkey RAs, who will be wearing pink sashes. <laughs> that is the international sign language for sash. Uh, the one, even if they are not working an event, if you see somebody with a pink sash wandering around, they are there to happily help out, answer any questions you have. Uh, and a function, and base, and narc on you if if you're underage drinking. Yeah. And Tara, uh, they're all seasoned uh, veteran cruisers, so they really know how to get people into the, the swing of things. Yes, Tara is also basically the boss. Uh, if uh, if something goes wrong, Tara makes it better. Uh, what? See? Uh, she stared pa pause, him down. Pausing for a nerd reference. <laughs> but please, please give a round of applause for Tara. We have Tara. Those are... She's off to go do actual work. Uh, this is that, that map, as aforementioned. Uh, as you come up that walkway, this is the concert area. The stage will be at the end of the square here. You can't miss it because it looks like a big stage at the end of the square. <laughs> If you keep walking down that walkway just a couple hundred yards, that's where the food fest is going to be happening. This is different than last year where they had the tents here in the uh, concert area. It was a little overcrowded and cramped. So this year the food fest is just down the way a little bit. Um, but there will be beverage stations. In yes, the there will. Square. Yeah, there will be uh, beverage tents in both locations. And you buy for to buy beverages. You do that right there at the the drink tent. That's separate entirely from your food fest tickets. Uh, dollar. I, I think they accept... They, they will accept dollars. Yeah. Uh, to be safe, go dollars. Uh, what is next? New monkey events. Uh, question. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yes. Thank you for mentioning that. There is uh, accessible seating. There's, first of all, there's going to be seating for about 900 at the concert this year. Last year we had seating for about 500. Uh, the area in front of the stage, it's built to be a stand-up rock show. So the area directly in front of the stage will be open for people to stand, uh, but there will be seating along the sides and throughout the back of, of the square, but we'll also have a dedicated uh, accessible seating area. We believe it is going to be right in front of the sound uh, booth tent this year. Last year it was directly in front of one of the speakers, which was not so great. Uh, so uh, it is per cur currently planned to be in that area, but it, wherever it ends up being, it will be clearly marked. But yes, there will be plenty of seating for anyone and everyone who's going to want it. Because let's, let's face it, we're all indoor kids. Yeah. <laughs> 
There could be a mosh pit. We'll see what happens. A very friendly mosh pit. Um, new monkey events. Uh, so every monkey is welcome. And you are all sea monkeys, which I'll refer to shorthand as monkeys. Uh, every monkey is available at every, I mean, encouraged to attend every event that they care to, and they are welcome at all events. That said, we've tried to, especially in the first couple of days this week, schedule uh, a number of events specifically geared towards helping new monkeys get used to the vibe of the cruise and encourage them ways to meet new people and things like that. Um, for example, this evening, uh, we have a number of karaoke sessions. They happen in the... <laughs> this room literally has four different names, depending on what you're looking at. It's the Queen's Lounge, Culinary Arts Center, America's Tetch Kitchen, and B.B. King's Kings. Blues Club. Uh, we refer to it as the Queen's Lounge for the most part, and it should be on most of the maps that way. It's on deck three, uh, excuse me, deck two midship. Um, there's a number of karaoke sessions happening there. Tonight, uh, that karaoke session, while everyone can, can attend and is encouraged to attend, only new monkeys are permitted to perform in that karaoke session. And it is a super awesome, very super, you'll never perform for a better crowd, frankly. So we encourage everyone to take that chance, even if you've never done it before, give it a shot. Um, go ahead. And if you're, if you're lower key, if that's not your style, we've also identified a number of events that are great for, hey, maybe you came by yourself, or you know, just you and your significant other, or maybe another couple. Events where you can sit down, you don't have to know anybody, and you can have fun, things like team trivia, uh, and how do we find those? Uh, they have been, they've been given a subtype on the, on the online skit. If you just run a search for New Monkey, it'll list every one of those items that we or their organizers have identified as being New Monkey friendly. They'll also be listed in each day's uh, newsletter, the when and where. Uh, so you can find them either way like that. And also, if you just don't know how to get started, see one of those, uh, the Helper Monkey RAs, the ones with the sashes, and they, uh, they know where, where to go to, to get you started. Also, uh, as you may know, we have a, a gaming room and a gaming library. We have literally a ton of games that we brought on board this year. And we're That's just in our library, not counting whatever you all brought. That's right. And we're very sparing with the word literal. So. Yes. That's the actual definition of literal. We have over 2,000 pounds of games. Uh, and there are numerous sessions throughout the week of uh, the cardboard concierge service where if you are not sure what game you might like to play, they're happy to help recommend something and help you get a game started. Also, uh, and I think I may be covering something that's already in a later slide, but we'll see. Uh, we have a bunch of signs on little table stands, the friendly Fez, it's a little happy Fez which says join, join us, or join in, I think. Uh, if someone is playing a game and you've got room for other people, we ask you to, to put one of those on your table, which will let people know they're welcome to join. Or if you are running a game and want people to join, grab one and put it in there uh, and, and, you know, encourage people to join in. And for sure, like, it's great. If you're a hardcore gamer, you know what to do. If you're not and you've just been curious about what the games are, we have it set up so that, you know, you can find something you're really going to enjoy. Yeah. Uh, also, this evening, we have the New Monkey Dance Party that is also happening in the Queen's Lounge CAC. It is open to anyone and everyone. Really, it is a dance party that has the words New Monkey in the title. <laughs> but we encourage, you know, it's Riz Rollins, DJ Riz, our, our DJ, we brought him back from last year because he's freaking awesome. Uh, he does a great job, and it is a great, if, if you are a dancing-oriented monkey, it is a real good way to join if in. If you're not, I remember being surprised on the very first Joko cruise, because they had a disco, and we're like, ah, no one's going to want to dance. Oh, really? <laughs> so, uh, give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, and so again, you can search for new monkey uh, items like that, uh, both online and in the uh, daily. Made available some time and space if people wanted to just kind of organize their own thing. I think the first one was an iPhone bell choir. Yes. <laughs> and the sea monkeys took to that like a thing that takes to another thing really well. <laughs> like and super Velcro. Yes. And we called it the, I don't know if we named it that or they called themselves, somehow it ended up being called the Shadow Cruise, basically the cruise within the cruise where all of you uh, a have... dream within a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Cherish your love. <laughs> it's just not going to be nothing but references all week long, folks. <laughs> yes, thank you, I approve, sir. Um, 
but the Shadow Cruise has grown and grown, uh, and so there are any uh, just a, a huge number. I have the count later on of how many events we have uh, of Shadow Cruise events, just self-organized uh, meetups and clubs and crafting events and book clubs and s needle craft circles and just about anything you can think of. People are oh, like, get excited about your tattoo and show it off, drink up kind of things. They're all over the schedule. Uh, again, those are online in the printed schedules, the daily schedule. We encourage you to check out some of these Shadow Cruise events. They're some of the most fun people have on the cruise. Uh, I am going to take a brief moment to interrupt my flow to welcome to the stage Mr. Will Wheaton, who has something to tell you. Thanks, Paul. Hi, nerds. Uh, welcome aboard and uh, and welcome home. Um, I uh, I brought I had this idea. It's my eighth Joko cruise, and I wish I'd started doing this the first year. Um, this is a mostly blank uh, book with a really clever sticker on the back of it. And um, uh, I had this idea that if I just released it on day one of the cruise, that it would make its way through most of the passenger manifest and find its way back to me. It is currently mostly blank, but I wanted to create this social event that's, let be honest, it's part Milgram experiment, where this would uh, get signed, people might draw pictures, you might put stickers, you might do things um, that make it uniquely you. There's about 1,700 of you, so you can't take up too much space unless you want to be the guy that took up a whole page. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put it on the front of the stage and I'm going to walk away from it. And uh, I'm Paul's putting a multicolored pen on it. Um, uh, what would be great, I mentioned this when we had our performer orientation and someone was like, oh great, that's the way the norovirus is going to get spread around the cruise. <laughs> so, I presume that someone in this room has a silver or gold Sharpie pen. Um, and I wonder if one of you would not mind writing something like wash your hands and put it on the front of this. And then it's, this belongs to the passengers. This is a Sea Monkey project. Uh, it's my personal Shadow Cruise project. I hope that it gets passed around, signed. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> all right, so so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, <laughs> um, and that's all. I just want to get. I I hope that this will spread. I'm not gonna make this announcement anywhere else. I posted it in the Facebook group, and I'm telling all of y'all because you're new, and it gives you an excuse to talk to people and talk to each other. I guess. Um, and I hope that it will make its way around the cruise. Uh, I leave it up to the passengers to decide where it's going to live when it's not being passed around. I would guess like the information desk or something like that. And then just somehow I would love it if it makes its way back to me at the end of the cruise. Uh, this is entirely in your hands, um, and uh, literally. And, uh, uh, and I hope that you will participate in this and it'll be a really fun, awesome thing that I'll be really happy to have. Uh, thanks for your time. I will give you back now to Paul and Storm and then I'm gonna leave. <laughs> okay. Do you want that pen back? <laughs> It'd be nice. That, that, it's a trust exercise. If I don't get it back, I'm not going to blame any of you and some of those experienced sea monkeys. <laughs> not necessarily you, sir. But uh, So we have talked about the Shadow Cruise. What is next? Office hours. Uh, this is a thing that we have the performers, we encourage the performers to do every year. Uh, we are all on a ship together for a week. So it is inevitable that you're going to come across some or many or all of the performers over the course of the week just standing in the buffet line or sitting in the hot tub or what have you. It is part of the reason we do this as opposed to a weekend con somewhere. We like the sort of almost summer campy vibe of the cruise. Um, that said, uh, there are times when it is more appropriate or less appropriate to approach a famous person who you would like to speak to or shake their hand or get an autograph. Uh, if they are, say, sitting at dinner with their family, maybe not such a great time. If they are asleep in their cabin, definitely not a great time. <laughs> but generally they are aware that when they are out and about, thank you, sir, we'll wait in everybody. 
generally they know that when they're out and about on the ship, they're, they're, they're open to, you know, hanging out and saying hi and what have you. But to encourage some mingling and interaction, we, we encourage them to hold these sessions. We call them office hours, and they really can be kind of anything that they want it to be. It can be as simple as, we're going to be at this bar from 3 until 4. Come drink and we'll chat and what have you. Somebody may want to do sort of a sit-down Q&A event or something. Uh, John Hodgman, for a number of years, when we were on a different ship that had a larger hot tub, would hold hot tub office hours. I don't know whether they are happening this year because the largest hot tub on this ship only holds about six people comfortably or 12 people very uncomfortably. Um, but there, a number of those have been scheduled already. The more will probably be added to the schedule, uh, especially as the week goes on, the newer performers start to really understand the vibe and the interaction. So keep an eye out for those. We definitely encourage you uh, to attend those. And as we say, um, it's don't feel that you can't ask them for an autograph, but we try not to let these turn into de facto autograph sessions. Like, we don't want it to turn into everybody stands in line for their 20 seconds with Will Wheaton or what have you. Uh, perhaps, rather than bringing a scrap of paper and asking for an autograph, you just have a brief little interaction. John Hodgman sums it up nicely by saying, just say, hello, my name is, then insert your name, I am a big fan of your work. And let the interaction go from there, because believe it or not, uh, performers and authors like to hear when people enjoy the things that they do. Um, so that's the, the brief word about that and office hours. Keep an eye out for those. We've talked about the gaming library. Uh, it says lower, but it's actually in the upper Vista dining room, but I don't feel like fixing it. So maybe because I, it's a cool. Maybe I can burn it away with my laser. Uh, that is on. So the, the dining room has two floors. The, lower, the first floor of it is on deck two, and the second floor is on deck three, just to confuse you. Um, but on the upper floor, deck three of the dining room, when you go in the entrance and immediately turn left, there is a big bunch of racks of many, many different games. I believe they are organized by duration? I think duration or type of game. Like yeah, generally grouped by you know shorter, quicker games, longer, more involved games. Uh, the cardboard concierge service, as we say, will be there. If you have brought a game that you would like to donate to the library for the week, there is a check-in, check-out process for that, uh, and also when taking games. Uh, it is available 24-7. There is a small set of tables in the dining room that will be dedicated to gaming 24-7, even during the dining room hours. But that said, you can game, because we own this damn boat for a week, you can game literally anywhere, except for like, my room. <laughs> and of course, a venue where there's something already going on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if, if you are gaming somewhere and there's a scheduled event, whether a shadow event or a, an official event, we do ask that you respect the, the, the space, the, their use of that space. Uh, but that said, if you're not disturbing them and they're not disturbing you, feel free to, to continue along. Do you have quiet space on there? I hope that I do. Where to game? Everywhere. Dining room we talked about. Lido Market is another really good place. That's up on 9, the buffet area, because there's dozens, if not hundreds, of tables there. It's another great space. And everywhere else on the ship, as we talked about. Uh, yes, the Explorations Cafe, which is where the coffee is on board, or I should say the good coffee is on board. Well, the best coffee. The best coffee, yes. Sorry, thank you. Uh, is up on deck 10 forward, basically right above us. Uh, it is, as we say, where the coffee is, but also there are a whole number of chairs and tables. It is where the ship's library is. We've designated that area as a quiet space for people who kind of want to get away from interacting with others and the noise and what have you, uh, to be able to go anytime and sit. We ask that everyone respect uh, that space in that manner we realize there's going to be some noise because there's a coffee bar serving coffee in it all day, but consider it like a library space. It's, um, it's super comfy and super chill. So yes. To, again, uh, okay. We discourage gaming in there. Uh, if you are playing an absolutely silent game like Solitaire or something, that's fine, but we prefer people do interactive gaming anywhere else. If someone is in there and creating a noise, whether it be, be a game or what have you, you'll probably be asked politely and quietly to move somewhere else. But we do appreciate 
you're respecting that space, but also, and again, be very aware that it is available for you uh, if you need a place to just sort of get away and chill that is not your room. Crafting is a thing that has become more and more popular as the years have gone on. Uh, the digital workshop on board, basically there is a uh, sort of schoolroom on board on deck three that is usually used, it's, it usually has a bunch of workstations in it, and it is used to teach old people how to send emails to their grandkids. <laughs> Which is a noble service, but... Oddly, we found that maybe our demographic doesn't need so much in the way of teach me how to log in. So we have cleared that space of all workstations, and it is used as a dedicated crafting area. Uh, we have a whole bunch of supplies. Uh, there are events scheduled throughout the day led by uh, Christine Fellows of Fiona's Fineries. Yeah, thank you, Fiona. Events. Also, uh, one of our performer, guest performers, Bonnie Burton, who has a number of crafting books, including the Star Wars crafting book and Crafting with Feminism, has a number of sessions scheduled, um, uh, including my favorite, where you, if you want, you can go and build an admiral sack bar <laughs> from a paper bag and some felt. And also, you're welcome, just like with gaming, you're welcome to craft anywhere. Uh, the game room as well, if you want to set up there, that's great. Uh, and the, but the same rules apply if there is a scheduled event in a space. Uh, we ask that you, you know, let the people who have reserved that space use it as needed. But if you are able to coexist, then more power to you. Well, I did want to mention the game library and all the gaming. Uh, wanted to acknowledge oh, our, yes. our partners and sponsors, Together Games, uh, Jen Ellis, and also Keith Baker, who really set that up. So I don't think they're here, but a round of applause for them anyway. Let them hear you at the back of the ship. Right, they're at the game library, setting it up. FOMO? No. <laughs> um, this is an issue for a lot of people, whether new monkeys or not. Yeah, especially Storm. Uh, this year, we have 241 different distinct events, adding up to 353 total different sessions, or... 498 hours of stuff happening on board this week, which works out to 20.75 days of content that we fit into seven days of cruise. Chill. It's all good. There is no way anybody can do everything on the ship. And once you've reconciled yourself to that fact, it is so much easier. Um, all right, for the 60 of you that said it, time turners don't exist. Believe me, we've tried. Um, but that said, really, more to the point of not worrying so much about missing out on things, is be sure to allow yourself time while you are here. There's so much to do. Don't forget to maybe schedule time to not do things, which is totally cool and necessary. Uh, I, I, he didn't make it up. But uh, the old con rule that we learned from Will Wheaton, the 5-3-1 rule, oh, yeah. five hours of sleep every night, three meals a day, one shower a day. <laughs> Everyone will thank you. <laughs> Mostly you. Although for the, for the cruise ship, it's actually 5 3 one, 99. Uh, the 99, 99 times a day, wash your hands. At yes. least 99 times a day. We, uh, as much as we joke about it, uh, a cruise ship is an especially closed system. Uh, and there has been a terrible flu virus going around this year, and it is very easy for people to catch all sorts of things on a cruise ship. Uh, not to make it sound like it's just wall-to-wall -wall filth and virus here. It's just easy because there's lots of us in a small space. Wash your hands a lot. There are also a bunch of hand sanitizer stations stationed throughout the ship. Use those, but also, to be fair, the main uh, cause of norovirus doesn't get killed with hand sanitizer, so you can't just exist on hand sanitizer. Wash your hands regularly, wash your hands thoroughly, before you eat, after you eat, after you interact with people and shake hands, after you've touched anything, anywhere, at any time. <laughs> and Joe Cole Cruz has never had a problem with it because we understand science. That's right. Uh, 
that, I believe, is the end of the prepared statements. Yeah, I think, uh, Sarah, you have a, a roving microphone. If there are questions, uh, just hold your hand up and Sarah will find you. Let's start right over here, down front. Do you like movies with gladiators? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to a Turkish prison? <laughs> you know when Scraps rubs up on your leg? More references, everyone. Thank you. For those of you leaving, thank you for joining us. Have a great, great cruise. Yeah, thank you. The first show and or dinner start at 5 p.m., but before that, the boat drill, the mandatory drill is at 3.15. Look on your key card for where your station is. Uh, believe me, they won't let you not do it, and it is required of everyone. And then join us all on, the, uh, on decks 9 and 10 as we sail away. Uh, 3.30 to 4.30 is a free cocktail hour. <laughs> Champagne, mimosas, and uh, Bloody Marys. Yes, and if you've never been on a ship before, it's like my favorite thing is watching the land disappear. Yeah. You don't want to miss it's it. It's so cool to watch them take essentially a building on its side <laughs> and watch it move away from land. Uh, so, any other questions? Yeah, where are you at, Sarah? There we go. Uh, where can I get a good guide to the Shadow Cruise? The Guide to the Shadow Cruise. Uh, that is available. That will be in the, the shadow cruise. Will be listed every day in the when and where um, newsletter that'll be delivered to your room every night. It'll be posted in all of the schedules on on the ship, and especially the full schedule for the week is posted in the elevator main elevator lobbies on two, three, and nine. Uh, oh, and also your in stateroom television. There yes. will be all of the updated schedules posted. We and also if, you, also, also, if you connect to the ship's network and go to the website that comes up, the Navigator, the full schedule will also be listed there. There's not a single dedicated Shadow Cruise guide the way we have for the this event schedule that you got, but you can find it in all those various ways. And if you have the internet, you can look at the online uh, schedule as well. Oh, the internet. Probably should have mentioned that for the people that left. Sorry. <laughs> The hey, internet no. on board sucks. It's just the way things are because it's got, you know, a, a, it's a very weak kind of busted satellite that they have to... Yeah, it's, it's the jalopy of satellites. Yes, that is no, but there, there's a whole lot of us on this ship and we use internet a lot more often than the usual clientele of a cruise ship. So the, yes, believe it or not, uh, the internet will be slower than you are used to. We have broken the internet several years of this cruise for a period of time at some point. We hope that does not happen this year. They've told us it's not going to happen and they're ready for us. Please do not hack the system. We know you can. Yes. Please do not. All of that said, there is internet on board. This handout should have appeared on your bed when you got to your staterooms. It shows you the various packages you get. This year, uh, they used to have uh, unlimited packages. They've stopped doing that. And it's all time-based. It's per-minute based. Uh, you can connect briefly at 75 cents a minute or prepay various size packages for lower rates. It's all on this handout, and it'll walk you through that. Question? The, the th yes, there are a few things that you can access by connecting just to the ship's network, but not the internet. The ship's navigator page, which has, um, it will have our schedule entered onto that. It, it's their system, but it, basically each event is listed there. We're trying it out this year. It's the first year we've tried it with them. Oh, but you can also, go ahead. There may be some websites that Holland America has a deal that you can access uh, without needing to buy internet. Like I think the New York Times has a version that you can access. Uh, that information should be in your stateroom uh, information, if that but is true. It's basically very limited. That said, each of the ports of call um, support all the major US mobile carriers. You should, depending on your carrier, either already have free voice and data built into your plan or there's some sort of international day pass that you can use. Uh, and there are numerous cafes and restaurants and places where you can get broadband internet in each of the ports of call. Uh, so you have options to get connected even if you're not on the ship. Uh, by the way, very briefly, please welcome the fourth uh, co-organizer of Joko Cruise, Drew Westfall. Hi, everyone. But 
just to reiterate, as far as accessing the schedule on your phones, navigator.hollandamerica.com does have the updated schedule. We'll be working with the ship to keep that schedule updated. At so all no, no paid internet required. No internet required whatsoever. Just get on the Osterdam Guest Network, um, and you'll be able to visit navigator.hollandamerica.com and view the schedule from there. And I think I think it may be under the heading "What's Happening on Board" or something like that. But I think so, yeah. yeah, you sh if you just go and sort of follow your nose. Um, oh, and sidebar: it's Osterdam, in case you were wondering. <laughs> As opposed to Osterdam. Right, Osterdam or Osterdam. Sure. Osterdam, Osterdam, tomatoes, tomatoes. And I think we're running short, so let's try to, to get through some questions. Oh, it's 222. We have 40 minutes. Oh, we have 40 minutes. Never mind. Let's chill. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm just wondering uh, what water is potable, both on and What water is potable? The water in your taps in your stateroom is perfectly potable. Uh, there is also, um, are there water fountains on the ship anywhere other than the fitness center? I don't think so, no. Maybe. There may be some water fountains like up on the Lido deck. I'm not sure, but then I mean, then there's also um, water fountains in the actual Lido restaurant where you can. You're not supposed to refill water bottles, so I can't tell you to do it. But, <laughs> but in answer to what you're probably wondering, yes, you may drink the t the water from your tap in your stateroom. It is the maybe. technology that goes into the water treatment of this ship is astounding. So yes, there's like computers and. A big Robots. machine that goes yeah, probably yeah. centrifuges, maybe. <laughs> uh, right down there. Uh, the Cruise Monkey app, um, people should download that before we leave. Yes, the Cruise Monkey app, it is not, this was an app developed by uh, one of our passengers uh, with some help from some others, I believe. It's not an official app per se, but it is available on the various app stores. Uh, it's just Cruise Monkey, I believe, all one word. Uh, you can download it. You should do it before we leave while you still have internet access. It, for example, yeah, I believe it downloads the schedule. Uh, so the current state of the schedule, it will have that. Uh, if you don't connect to the internet, then it may get a little obsolete or at least won't have the things that we add, but it will be available there offline. It also has the full uh, karaoke uh, list because it's 30-some thousand songs long. It uh, has maps of the ship and descriptions of each space. It has various uh, options available to you. There's also an app developed by other passengers for social media uh, that doesn't require the internet called TwitR. Uh, and you should have received a handout with instructions for how to connect to that, I believe, when you checked in. If you are interested in using that, it's used by uh, it's not used by all of the passengers, but it is a very useful tool for a lot of people, especially when trying to schedule uh, events and things like that. That's also included in the Sea Monkey app. It's yes. built into it as well. Yeah, yeah. And the short version of how to just get onto Twitter outside of Cruise Monkey is to go to joco.hollandamerica.com. Oh, and we also we have uh, a bunch of easel pads uh, that are located near the back of the ship in the Explorer's Lounge, which I believe is on deck three, uh, as a, a sort of analog Twitter, if you will, a way for people to just, you know, if you want to meet up with friends or you want to have some sort of event that's not even necessarily a shadow, monk, a shadow cruise event, just, hey, anybody who's interested in uh, knitting a, a scarf, come meet me at the crow's nest at 10. Right, or who wants to talk about Tesla? You know, yeah, whatever. we've got a whole bunch of easel pads in that area, and people can use that as a sort of analog method of get, you get in touch with each other. We will also have similar easel pads right by the game library specifically for scheduling gaming events with friends and things like that. So you have various communication options available to you. Sarah. I uh, had a question about the in-room TVs with the schedule. Uh, yes. Right now, a lot of the schedule pages are either a non-stop spinning cursor or a black screen. Thank you for telling us. We're going to look into that yeah, immediately. I, so far, you guys have not broken the network or the internet, but you have broken the interactive TV. <laughs> and, yeah, Congratulations! We are, we, are, we are rebooting the interactive TV now. I love it. I love it. They, we should be They're sending them a bill for all of the, the, the uh, yeah. testing we're doing. Holland America appreciates your load testing. <laughs> We also, while it occurs to me, we also have, a, there's a screening room on, that's deck three as well, I believe, right? Yes. Just, so basically just above and slightly that way uh, is a roughly 40-some seat screening room where, oh my God, turn off your ringer. <laughs> uh, 
because we are that kind of people, every day at 4.20 p.m. we are airing The Big Lebowski in that room. And there are various other nerd-centric movies scheduled throughout the week. You can see that uh, schedule there. Um, but it's a very cool space for doing that. And I just spoke to the bar manager. Starting at uh, 4 p.m. or so, bartenders will be coming through to get any white Russian orders you may have for, for the screen. Where's Sarah at? Here we go. Any? Okay. Yes, hi, this is not a question. This is a request to anybody using the internet, paying for the internet. Please turn off your software backups. Yes. Please turn off your Dropbox yes. uploads. Yes. Please turn off your system updates. Preach it! Yes! Updates. Preach it! Please Testify. make it a little faster for us. If I had a trophy, I would be handing it to you right now. Give it a bottle. Uh, this bottle? <laughs> suggestion from down front. I don't think you want the bottom. So yes, if, if you are going to connect to the internet, please turn off your various apps and things that are automatically backing up uh, because it uses a lot of bandwidth and slows everything down for everyone, including you. So please pay attention to that. One over here. I had a mistake with my merch. Um, who would I contact? A mistake with merch. A mistake. I just... Like I got the wrong thing. Oh. Sure, yeah. You can go to the info desk on deck one, and they will be able to help you out there. It may take us a little while to do any exchanges or returns, but we'll do what we can to. And that's actually a general thing. If you have questions about regular cruise operations, I know if you haven't been on a cruise, you might not know the difference, but if it's something about your stateroom uh, or something about the, uh, the restaurants, then you go to the Holland America desk. If it has to do with Joe Co. merchandise or our events or questions or comments, we have on deck one at the atrium, a Joko Cruise info desk, where we'll be able to square you away. Um, will there be any other movies screened at all in that screening room? Uh, Paul, are there other movies in the screening room? Planned? Are there other, 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 movies? Oh. Are there other movies in the Yes, there, uh, so far I know we have uh, several showings of Star Trek IV, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Wally, -E, and Wonder Woman. <laughs> All of which are, I think, also available on your in-room TVs. Um, Among many others. There's yeah. actually a, a, quite, an in, a, quite a long selection of movies available to you on the in-room. Ragnarok. And, and I gotta say, there you go. chilling, chilling in your room with a movie is, is kind of great. Any other questions? Who's next? Oh, back here. She'll shout. How are we doing? About 80% through this bottle, and it's a very strong beer. <laughs> yeah, we're doing great. Actually, I, I think we should thank all of our staff, our volunteers. Every year, uh, we just have amazing people who help us out in addition to the core staff. Uh, and they make it look effortless. So, thanks to them, we can be relaxed. By the way, nice shirt. Everyone's got to go look at her shirt now. Uh, I believe there was a question up here somewhere. Balcony back up there. Can you shout it? Uh, oh, there you go. For the specialty lunches, it says that you need to sign up by dialing 88. But if you dial 88, they tell you you shouldn't sign up. You should just like a, a numbers cap on it. Uh, we will, as soon as we get done with this, we will have someone check into that. Thank you uh, for bringing that to our team. Worst case, if you show up, I'm sure they will find a way for you to partake in the specialty lunch. They, they told us they'll make for as many people as arrive, and we believe them. So for right now, I might suggest try again in a little while. Okay, thanks. Sure. More questions? I have one. Right down front. I didn't have the time to sign up for shadow events in, uh, before coming, and I'm hearing about, oh, so many people about that one and that one, now I'm panicked that I'm not going to get into the show um, So what do you recommend? Oh, uh, well, most events, unless they are specifically limited, like if it's a game that's only for four people or something, most shadow events are not, uh, you don't have to sign up for them per se, you just show up. And again, as I say, I don't think that we've ever really had any sort of issue of people not being able to get into any events in the last year. Yeah, it's something we were really concerned about last year, is what if everyone wants, to, one, everyone wants to do the one thing, and it's some kind of strange magic that there's this great variety of things going on that we found that, uh, that it usually works out. But yes, it was not a case that you were supposed to sign up for them. It's just no. you know that it's there and you show up. So you're safe. Yeah. We have another question up here. Oh, another? Is there uh, any kind of choir other than uh, kazoo choir? 
<laughs> Gosh, I don't know, you want to start one? No, no, I'm not interested in a kazoo choir, but if anyone... <laughs> so you're looking for a choir to sing with? Is that... Hmm. I don't know, uh, if, I don't know if there are any particularly planned... Uh, check the Seattle Cruise schedule. I don't know if... Uh, I, offhand, if there are any plans. Or you can, if you wanted to start one, you can post on Twitter and see if anyone were interested. Uh, right down here. Running. Shout it. Uh, is the music library intact? Is the music library intact? It's karaoke. For karaoke. Oh. oh, for karaoke. Yes, it should be intact this year. It should work. We, it, it, yeah. Last year, the music library for karaoke was uh, being held on what was supposed to be a rugged hard drive. Wasn't so rugged. <laughs> and it got dropped, and we ended up having to use the ship's karaoke system, which was, let's say, limited. And in fact, the ship basically does not do karaoke anymore, so we have to bring our own. But I on, the, on the plus side, we all know a lot of um, Frank Sinatra songs now. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> That's Frank Sinatra's greatest hit. Yeah. Um, he loved America. Well, I just, I think it's time for me to come out and say it. I'm the one who dropped that hard drive last year. <laughs> oh. The hard truth is out. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We've switched to all SSDs. Yeah. Uh, Let's so yeah, we have another question. Hopefully you did not put those all underneath a very large magnet when you packed them. No, we packed them in water so they'd be really shocked. Oh, good, good. Uh, question? So I see a hand here. How about the internet? Ah. No, you do have to log in, log out, and actually you should log out because if you don't, it will sort of continue going for a period of time longer than you want it to. At we're least sure. a half an hour. Yeah, so we're not sure if it's 10 definitely. or 15 or 30 minutes, but it will charge you that extra time. And there's a button that pops out that you can hit, or you can go up to the, to the uh, and just type yeah. in logout.com. Yeah. Uh, did I hear someone had an up top, up top question? Hi, uh, I believe that we're on mountain time for most events, is that correct? Yes, tonight at 2 a.m., okay. clocks move forward to 3 a.m. It's that way for the duration of the cruise until the very last night, late Saturday night, early Sunday morning at 2 a.m., clocks go back to 1 a.m. And I think on this cruise, I think, there won't be a difference between the time on shore Correct. and the ship's time, so we don't have to Correct. worry about that. That said, do not trust your phone to change automatically. Even if you're connected to the internet, it may not know properly, so it is best to manually change the time zone on your phone or uh, device. Uh, just to be sure you don't end up super early or super late to a thing. More questions? We got a little time. There you we got answers. Uh, there's one, one there and then one there. When my app is still in Eastern time, how do I change it? To <laughs> That's between you and your phone. <laughs> um, do you actually need someone to help you change the time zone on your phone? We have about 900 yeah, we have, people. We basically on this have ship. all of tech support for the Western seaboard <laughs> here on this ship. <laughs> oh, the oh. Cruise Monkey app thinks that it's in. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid we don't have anything to do with the. Yeah, that's part the of the app. reason we don't have an official association. We don't really run that app. Um, but we'll try and get the word through to the people who need to know that fact. Uh, oh, there goes Drew. <laughs> Off to tell them. Uh, there was another. Oh, right one down there. front. Oh wait, there was one here first. Hold on a second. One here first. We got you next. Go ahead. I had a question real quick. First time cruise, first time cruiser, first, first time, time listener, see. long time. Yay. Can someone explain Twitter to me? Because I'm having a hard time sure. figuring out. Sure. Twitter based on my thing. Do you use Twitter? Okay. <laughs> Do you use the internet? <laughs> uh, Twitter is basically a method of social media communication to be able to send messages to a large group of other people back and forth. Uh, Twitter is sort of our, the, the ship's version, or it was developed by uh, some passengers. And it's, it's an, uh, a resource you can use to send messages without having to connect to the internet. Um, so, for example, people can post, hey, we're all meeting up at the Lido bar at five to drink Mai Tais or what have you, or can say if anybody is interested in 
this particular author or books or whatever. We're going to sit here tomorrow at 3, or we're all going to go to this beach when we're in Cabo at 2, 2 a.m. meet up here. And we I, have I, people to help organize. I believe it's also similar to message boards that you can post a topic. Yeah, I think so. Um, is that... Uh, those of you who use Twitter are more often than we do. Is that a reasonable? Solution? Well, they're all new. Okay, you know, I, just, I was hoping there was some experience folk here somewhere, and Drew's in the middle of doing a tech support thing right now. That's sort of the gist of it. Is it's a it's a way of, of messaging, like sort of Facebook Messenger or what, or like posting things on Facebook or what have you. And you don't need to connect to the actual internet to use it. You just need to connect to the ship's network and there are instructions in that handout how to do so. I could not explain it better. And, and you don't than, have to use Twitter. Uh, about 30 to 40 percent of people do, so it's not unusual at all. To not also, use. I should say, perhaps your best resource if you are interested in it, I believe, at least until the boat drill, there is a Twitter help desk set up in the atrium on deck one. The people who actually are running Twitter were, are there to help you get it set up or help you understand it. So if that's uh, perhaps, a, I'm not sure how long they're going to be there, but I, they should be there now until 3, 3.15 at least, if you are interested in talking to them about it. But it's also not mandatory. It's not like you're only going to hear about certain things officially through Twitter. It's just strictly sort of an extra resource for you. Okay, down front. Okay, so those red beads you're wearing. Did you attend Mardi Gras? <laughs> No, I'm going to get that question all week. This, um, I have a persona that is Coach Cruz. I used to carry a silver whistle on one of those lanyards, and I enjoyed spinning it so much, and it turns out it wasn't such a quality whistle, that it kind of broke. And I only realized I didn't have a whistle for my Coach Cruz persona until yesterday. And the only place I could find a whistle was Party City. <laughs> Fortunately, they had them in many colors, so throughout the week, look for how it changes. I would love to go to Mardi Gras, however. Oh, over here. Is Twitter in the Cruise Monkey app broken right now? Because every time I go to that page, it comes up and says, error loading tweets. It could well be. It works for me. You, you have to log into local Wi Fi. What was that? Turn off mobile data. Or go on airplane mode. Or go in airplane mode. Try that. Connect, connect to the local Wi Fi. I love a tech savvy crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need cruise ship mode. <laughs> you have to quickly redraw the icon as a ship in pen on your on your phone. I have another question. I'm traveling with my family. I've got two boys, and I'm Hello. wondering: are there any are there any events geared toward teenagers? There are not, at least official event-wise, specifically geared towards teenagers, other than Storm and I will probably curse a lot during our show. Which, which most teens find very entertaining. Um, I am trying to think if there are any... There is the... Um, we've uh, retained the Club Hal programming. So there's... Um, um, I guess how, 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 how you say. It's... Uh, <laughs> Daycare for kids up to teens. <laughs> no, it's a, it, but it's it's a child child oriented and and kid oriented uh, programming and events. And, and there is one that's specifically for teens, so it's you know by age bracket. So uh, I think if you go to the Holland America desk, they can tell you about how to get hooked up. And I guarantee you, there are a ton of people on board here with a Nintendo Switch. So if you have one oh, of those, yeah. you can find lots of friends with them. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't think there's a lot of specific programming geared toward kids or, or teens on our part, but you can also check the Shadow Cruise schedule because I haven't really thoroughly looked through all of it to know if somebody has something like that. Because there are a good number of, of families and kids on board, so I'm sure somebody's planning some sort of event. And welcome. There'll be all sorts of fun new words you can ask mom about <laughs> later. Anybody else? Uh, Up so there? We, uh, I'm part of a group, and we got the wrong dinner times on their car, on our cards. So I got the wrong color for a span, and they're all gold team. Oh, so okay. It's a okay. good way to swap wristbands. Go down to the Joko info desk. Yes, and they'll take take care of you. Yeah, they'll be able to take care of you. Tell yes. them Paul and Storm said it was okay. They actually don't have the wristbands. They told me. What's that? What's that? I ran by there before here. here. Oh, what? What? I've been running around the ship. Okay. They don't did, them. Did, I'm sorry, did they say they didn't have wristbands? Or? Yeah. 
they weren't sure how they. Oh, okay, they may not. They may have just not brought them in from the the pier yet. Okay. So yeah, try try a little later, and worst case, um, just show up at dinner, and or if you've got the early show, plead your case to the monkey. You know, stand with your friends and say, "I'm with them. I promise they screwed up." And tell Paul Storm said it was okay. Yeah, we'll get you squared away. We want you to to, to dine with your friends. <laughs> Actually, I know that that's a story and you're really trying to ditch your friends. <laughs> and we'll, we'll cover for you. No, I'm sorry, so there's no way you can swap. I'm really I, sorry. I, I said it in front of all these people, so it's true. <laughs> uh, uh, one down here. Anyone requests? Away? Sorry, it's time for requests. <laughs> Not that we'll do them. Oh. Uh, did, uh, did you have a question, man? It's okay if you don't have a question. Woo! Well, if, if we're at questions, um, all right. Anybody here from out of town? Yeah. Oh, we do have a, do we have, so do we have a question? Oh. Okay, so that is, that is a try. That is an unfair extrapolation of what I said to that man up there. <laughs> there is no longer a brig on the ship. They used to have a brig, but they will confine you to uh, your stateroom. And there is a morgue on the ship. <laughs> but otherwise, thank you so much for joining us on Joko Cruise. Yeah, we hope you, you have a great time. And uh, hopefully we provide you everything you need to, uh, to get started. So thanks. Uh, mandatory boat drill at 3.15. Sail away party starts 3.30 on deck 9. 5 o'clock is the first dinner and show. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks, everybody. Oh, sorry, 3 o'clock. Boat drill's at 3. My mistake, sorry. So in 17 minutes, boat drill.